This is my Z80 control board for the RC2014 retro computer. It provides a bootloader, UART, disk emulation, bus monitor, and debugger. With all the functionality provided by the Z80 control, it can replace the clock, ROM, serial I.O., and compact flash boards in the standard RC2014. All that's needed for a fully functional computer are the Z80 CPU board, 64K RAM board, and the Z80 control itself. Of course, you can also use additional boards such as my Z80 control IO expander board, video game interface board, SN76489 sound board, Ed Brindley's YM2149 board, and my TMS9918A video card. At the heart of the Z80 control is an AVR microcontroller, which together with an SPI bus expander interfaces with the Z80 bus. To allow the AVR time to respond to the Z80 control's I.O. requests, additional glue logic is used and a jumper is provided to disable wait states, enable wait states for all I.O. requests, or enable wait states for a specific range of addresses. The Z80 control also includes a micro SD card to store disk and ROM images that can be used by the Z80. Z80 control emulates an Altair floppy drive, so original Altair CPM disk images can be used, as well as those from the SimH project. The AVR can also utilize direct memory access to quickly load data from the SD card directly into memory without involving the Z80. The Z80 control provides powerful monitor software that provides a command line interface to load programs, mount disks, debug, and monitor the execution of the Z80. The reset and halt buttons allow you to stop the Z80 program that's running at any time and return to the monitor. The Z80 control supports an optional I.O. expander card that interfaces with the AVR's SPI bus to provide a real-time clock and up to four additional 8-bit GPIO ports. Additionally, along the top, four SPI headers are provided with individual chip selects to allow interfacing with additional SPI peripherals. The GPIO expanders have configurable addresses so that additional cards can be added to provide up to 14 GPIO ports in total. The Z80 control command prompt is the interface through which programs are loaded, executed, and debugged. Typing help lists the available commands with a short description for each one. Ty typing a command without the required parameters will show the usage for that command. Z80 control provides XMTX and XMRX commands to send and receive files on the SD card via the XModem protocol. These commands require a terminal program such as TerraTerm that supports XModem. These commands are handy to transfer small programs to and from the SD card without removing it, but to conveniently transfer a large number of files, it is often easier to access the card directly on a PC. The DIR command lists the files on the SD card's FAT32 file system. The load bin command will load a binary file into memory, but since binary files don't include a load address, it must be specified on the command line. In order to work properly, most programs must be loaded to the address they were originally assembled for. The load hex command will load a program into memory from an Intel hex file. Because hex files include the location of each record in memory, specifying a load address is not necessary. After loading the hex file, it will show the total number of bytes loaded as well as the addresses to which they were loaded. Areas of memory can also be saved to either hex or binary using the save hex or save bin commands. The dump command displays the contents of memory. It requires a starting address as a parameter and optionally takes an end address. Without an end address, it will show the next 100 hex bytes of memory. In addition to hex values, the dump command also shows ASCII for printable characters. This output shows the program loaded from hello.hex. Because the memory after the program is uninitialized, it may contain random values. The fill command can be used to clear all memory within a particular range.
now the memory has been cleared to all zeros. The hello.hex file can now be reloaded and displayed more cleanly. The run command executes a program at a specified address. Run 100 will execute the hello world program previously loaded with load hex. The program runs and when it executes a halt instruction, control automatically returns to the Z80 control monitor. Pressing the halt button on the Z80 control board will also return to the monitor. Some programs use the halt instruction to suspend program execution while waiting for an interrupt. For such programs, automatically returning to the monitor is undesirable, so Z80 control provides a halt command to disable and re-enable this behavior using halt on and halt off. Once automatic halting is disabled, the halt button on the Z80 control board will no longer work, so the reset button must be used to return to the monitor. The poke command can be used to modify an area of memory. This command will add an exclamation point to the end of hello world. Now that the exclamation point has been added, I can rerun Hello World and it will display the exclamation point. The parameters for the poke command include starting address followed by a series of bytes to set at that address. If no bytes are specified, poke will run in an interactive mode where it shows the contents of each address and can either update or skip each byte in memory depending on the input given. Interactive poke mode can be exited using the X. The disASM command disassembles code at the specified address in memory. If no end address is given, it will disassemble the first 10 hex bytes of code. In addition to the instruction mnemonics, the disassembler also shows hex values in printable ASCII characters. The ASCII can be useful for identifying when non-executable data has been incorrectly interpreted as code. The Z80 control has powerful bus monitoring and debugging features. These features are especially helpful when trying to debug software for which a native debugger cannot be loaded on the Z80. However, because the Z80 control debugger only has access to the Z80's external bus, it cannot display register values. The watch command can display I.O. requests, memory accesses, or opcode fetches as they occur. Typing watch without any parameters will show the current watch status. Watch op fetch 100 to 1FF will enable watches for opcode fetches for between those addresses where the hello.hex program has been loaded. Now typing debug 100 will display each instruction as it's been executed. The output of the program is mixed in with the instructions. Here's an out instruction sending a character to the UART, and on the next line the character is actually displayed. Enabling watches on I.O. writes and I.O. reads on ports 10 and 11 will show when the program accesses the UART to print out a character. For each character, it first checks to see if the UART is ready, and then it sends a character. Likewise, enabling mem read watches on memory locations 11E to 12B, where the string hello world is stored, will show when the program reads each character from memory before printing it. Here the D has been fetched from memory. The status register is checked to see if the UART is available, and the D is sent to the UART.
breakpoint stop the program execution on opcode fetches, IO requests, or memory accesses at the specified address range. Setting a breakpoint for opcode fetches at 011B will halt the execution of the program each time before the program outputs a character. Typing C at the monitor prompt continues execution until the next time the program hits that instruction. Typing S will execute the program one instruction at a time. In addition to loading and running standalone programs directly, ZED Control can also mount and boot from CPM disk images. It emulates the Altair 8800 disk drive so it can run unmodified CPM disks from the Altair 8800 and the SimH Altair Z80 emulator. This is a fully functional CPM environment that can execute the normal CPM commands like DIR and run CPM compatible software such as MBASIC. Here I've loaded an example program that demonstrates how Z80 control can expose additional peripherals to the Z80. Port 0 controls which chip is selected, in this case the RTC chip. Port 1 controls which register on the selected chip is written or read. Finally, port 2 is used to either read or write the value of that register. This program accesses the date and time from the real-time clock on the Z80 Control I.O. expander and displays it to the user. Ladder was a popular game that was available on many CPM systems. This game illustrates another feature of Z80 Control. When a program runs too fast, the clock div command can be used to set the clock divider to a slower speed. Now the clock has been slowed down to 4 MHz and the game runs much more slowly. As mentioned previously, pressing the HALT button on the Z80 control board will return to the Z80 control prompt at any time. This can be used to exit from CPM. Z80 control has many other commands, but these are the most helpful and demonstrate what it can do.